How did I make it through the storm? How did I make it this far? Through the valley and over the hills. I know it had to be God. How did I make it through the storm? How did I make it through the rain? You want to know just how I made it? It's so easy to explain. It was God's grace. truly give him praise this morning. We come from Psalm 67. Psalms 67. And it reads, God, be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more day. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here among each other today and let your word go forward. Our Father and our God, we come this morning thanking you for all that you have done for us and all that you're going to do, Father. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We ask that your Holy Spirit bounds in this house today. And whatever is said here, Father, may it be taken in a spiritual way. Let your Holy Spirit guide you and lead you in every way. Father, we just want to give you all the praise and glory. and we, Our praise and glory is hallelujah to the Lamb of the world. Yes. Father, we just come now thanking you. Yes. Father, we ask that you bless those that are sick and shed in this morning. Yes. Bless our pastor and all the associate pastors that are at Ebenezer. Yes. We bless our auxiliary of Ebenezer and we ask that you lift them and lift our church, Father. Have your eyes focused on this church, Father, and bless everyone in the, under the sound of my voice. Father, we just thank you, your mercy and your grace at all times. You're always there. Father, you said all we have to do is call on you, and you're there. And we are calling on you today, Father, because the world is in a turmoil. Amen. And we just ask that you just turn it around, because only you can do that. Amen. We have no power to do that, but you can do it, Father. And we ask that of you this morning. Father, then I come and I ask you that you just bless the surrounding. Let your Holy Spirit swarm in this house today and let your word go forward. Bless the speaker that's going to bring the word today and let it, let it be known that you are the source of our understanding in our life. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen.
And I'm doing the best that I can Seems like my way gets so hard That I just don't understand Oh Lord, Lord I need you to hold me I can't make it by myself Lord, Lord I need you to hold me let me say it right here, my friend. Y'all, I'm gone to run for Jesus. Even if I have to run alone. Cause you know it's my determination to make our beautiful heaven my home. Oh, Lord, Lord, I need you to hold. I can't make it, can't make it by myself, Lord. Lord, I need you to hold. Let me say it again, my friend. Y'all, I'm gone to run for Jesus. Even if I have to run alone. Cause you know it's my determination. To make a beautiful heaven my home Oh Lord, Lord I need you to hold Right now, right now, right now Right now, right now Lord Yes I do y'all Sometimes I get by myself And I just tell him I said hold me Jesus Lord, hold, hold me, sweet Jesus. If you hold everything, gonna be all right. If you hold, I can walk right. If you hold me, I can talk right. If you hold me, I can treat my neighbor right. Lord, I need you. Every day of my life to hold me, hold me. I need you to hold my hand right now, right now, right now, right now, Lord. Yes, I do, y'all. I need him to hold my hand. Lion and the lamb, the 
Good morning, Ebenezer. Good morning. <clears throat> to our pastor, Reverend Dr. Rudolph Overstreet, to Reverend Howell, and any other ministers that may be present in the sanctuary. <coughs> At this time, I would like to welcome any first time visitors. If you are visiting for the first time, would you please raise your hand? Welcome. Uh, continue to hold your hand up and the uh, usher will pass you out a visitor's package. We ask that you fill it out and return it to the nearest usher. And on behalf of Devil, Dr. Ruben Overstreet, we welcome you and please come again. Amen. Secondly, I would like to acknowledge three of our graduates. The first one is Sister Arthurine Washington's grandson, Mr. Kenneth Jamon Hall, and he's from Sparkman High School, and he will be attending the U.S. Naval Academy in June. Amen. Secondly, I have two sets of twins. The first set of twins is Cameron and Logan Pizant. They graduated uh, on the 20th, so congratulations to them also. Amen. And last but not least are my two favorite twin granddaughters. <laughs> <laughs> they graduated from Davidson, so congratulations to all of them, and God bless you, and may you continue to have success. Amen. to piggyback on what um, Sister Ann talking about the graduates. Next Sunday, we are going to recognize our graduating um, high school seniors as well as our college graduates. 
it's no small feat in this day and age for them to have reached this milestone. So we've got a special program planned on next Sunday for the parents. Please, please have your graduates here so that we can recognize them. Also, if they have not already done so, ask them to get their information to uh, Brother Jarvis Adams. He's putting together a really nice presentation. We've done several robocalls, but there may be some we have still missed. So um, if the students have not gotten their information in, we're asking for that information by today. Today is also the deadline for the scholarships. We have the Woodrow Gibbs Scholarship and the Jessica Knight Scholarship. We will be presenting those scholarships on next Sunday as well. Um, if the students need the applications, they can get with me, but we have them and we want the students to apply for them. It's our way of aiding them in their next step. Amen. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Amen. Amen.
years that they built Lawton Grove Baptist Church. So does that mean if I didn't do right or straight, it was not because I wasn't taught what to do, amen. But like most people, I went one way and the Bible went the other way, but then Jesus Christ changed my life. And I'm so glad that he did. I don't know about you, but Lord, I don't know what would have happened to me if God had not rescued me. Amen. 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 So give God a hand clap of praise here. Because I realized that I was not the only one that God rescued. Now I'm going this morning, I want you to turn to a familiar verse. This going to be just one verse. And I want to, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, bring this verse out because it's going to it affect all of us in this country and all over the world that know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Amen? Amen. So if you would, please, I'd love for you to turn to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Hebrew 9, verse 27. <clears throat> Shall we read? Please remain standing. My gracious heaven and Father, we thank you so much for being God in our lives. Lord, there's so much happening now that we need to save you more than we've ever done before. We need your protection. We need your guidance. We ask you, Lord, to give us your provision that we may walk with you on a daily basis. We pray, Lord, that you will never leave us, as you said, not forsake. There's so many things going on in this city. If you ever move your hand for us, Lord, we're going to be totally lost and destroyed. We pray for our sick, dying, our shut in. We pray for those, that, Lord, that do not know you in the pardon of their sin. We pray for those, that, Lord, who are still on the battlefield, working for their Lord. Bless all of us and guide us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. I want you to look at the subject for this text that the Lord has given me. It could have been you. I think about what happened in Buffalo, New York. It could have been me. But by the grace of God, some people were spared. And by the grace of God, some fell to the destruction. But every night that you go to sleep, I share every night that you retire to go to bed, I want you to understand there's no guarantee that you're going to wake up tomorrow. But one thing is guaranteed in your life, in my life, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you're going to be all right. Now, I hear everybody talking about those that die. I feel sorry for those family, but did anybody share with them Jesus Christ? Did anybody tell them that one day they're going to have to meet their maker? Did anybody tell them that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Did anyone tell them that? You know, many years ago, there was a train called the Sunset here in Alabama, you, in Mobile. You remember that? Some told, somebody hit the bridge and knocked the track offline. And there was 47 people perish that day, that night. Now, if they had known 
if they had known that this was going to be their last day, would they have done anything differently? I believe they would have. But you don't know, and I don't know, when the Lord is going to call us home. Now we're going to look at two full things today. We're going to look at death. We're going to look at judgment. We're going to look at preparation. And we're going to look at time. These are the things we're going to look at. Death, judgment, preparation, and time. All those things that I've mentioned will affect our life in some form or another. You see, a person can, can survive anything, you and I can survive anything, but except death. Death is going to come our way. It is a proven fact. Enoch died. Enoch did not die, but Adam and Eve did. The only two persons that did not die was Enoch and Elijah. But they will die when, in Revelation, they tell you, these two will come back and they will die. David died. Paul died. Daniel died. Ezekiel died. And I'm here to tell you, you're going to die if the rapture does not come. But there is a resolution and there is a result that you can prevent all of this in your life. Absent from the body, but present from the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now let me tell you this. Death is a powerful thing. But God's great hand has prepared you and me to escape it. If you would only trust and believe in him. The Bible tells you and I to get ready. Get ready. Now, you can take it like a days ago. You can look at me and say, I ain't going to pay no attention to this old preacher up there talking about that. But I'm here to tell you that death is going to knock on your door. And the most important thing in your life is whether you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior or you do not know him. And if you do not know him, hell is where you're going to lift up your eyes. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? It could have been you in top stole up there in Buffalo, New York. It could have been you. It could have been you in Charleston, South Carolina, when that young man came in that church and killed those seven or eight people. It could have been you. But let me show you something with you. Paul, I ask you to give me Job. Chapter 14, verse 5. Job, chapter 14, verse 5. All right, I'll turn to it. What it says in that verse, I, I can explain it myself. Seeing his days are the what? The term. Your days are determined. My days are determined. But look what it says. The number of his months are what? With thee. Your months and my months are with thee. And thou, thou has appointed his bound that he cannot what? Pass. And my Christian friends, I'm here to tell you, the Bible says in that verse, it is appointed. What you mean, Pastor? It's fixed. What you mean? It's decided. What else do you mean by that verse? God has ordained it that all of us, time is set. I don't know when it, I don't even know what I'm going to make it at the end of this day. But I know one thing, and you ought to know one thing. As long as Jesus Christ is in your life and you've accepted him, you're going to be all right. You don't have to worry about the fuel here on earth, but God has already got a place for you. He's going to be waiting for you if he call you home. You hear what I'm talking about today? Not only that, you need to agree one thing in your mind. 
that you're going to die if the rapture does not come. If it does not come, you're going to pass away from here. One thing I want all of you to understand, you cannot escape this appointment. This appointment is fixed by God. You can't fix it. Let me tell you a story. There was a man who went to the market, the, the market in Damascus, and he saw death. And he came back to his master and said, Master, I need to borrow your horse. He said, because I saw death in the marketplace. And I need to leave here. And I need to go to Jerusalem. The master said, take my horse and go. He took the horse and he took off. The next day, death came to his house. And his master said, he's not here. He's gone to Jerusalem. He said, that's all right. I'm not going to meet him in Jerusalem. I'm going to meet him in Bethlehem. The point is this. You don't know where death is going to meet you. But when, somewhere, somehow, it's going to meet you, it's going to meet me. But the most important thing in our life is that we know Jesus Christ and the part of our sin. Now, the first we see is death. There is no hand, human hand, can sustain the power of death. Death is inevitable for you and me. You see, let me mention this to some people that you know. If John Kennedy would have known that he was going to be assassinated in Dallas, he'd have never gone to Dallas. If Martin Luther King had known that he was going, life was going to perish in Memphis, Tennessee, that he was helping to sanitize workers, he would have never gone to Memphis, Tennessee. If Robert Kennedy would have known when he went to California running for president, if that Sir Han, Sir Han was going to meet him going through the kitchen and he was going to lose his life, do you think he would have never gone there, my Christian friends? And I'm here to tell you, we do not know where we're going to meet death. But it's though it shouldn't frighten you or alarm you if you're born again in Jesus Christ. Because he died for us on Calvary. Yes, he did. Then he was raised from the dead. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And he, and, and he sits now on the right-hand side of the Father. Yes, he is. And that same God that died for your sins and my sin will also take care of all of us. He asks you to come to him. Render your life to him. But you got to what? Be ready what? to receive him as your personal Savior. Paul, give me, what? give me Luke 14, verse 40. Luke 14, verse 40. We'll talk about be ready. Be ye, therefore, ready. See, you can come to this church all you want to. You can sing in the choir, you can deep, you can do anything you want to, but you better get ready to meet thy Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You ought to know him on a personal basis. You're not going to see Jesus because you just sit up here in the church. You're not going to say that you're a Christian and you do every down the thing there is. You must be what? Committed to serve our Lord and Savior. Because someone could take your life. You could just be out there. Someone could run into you in your car and you're dead and go. But you don't know what's going to happen what? to you. So I'm asking you to be ready. David said just one step between me and death. That's what the scripture, just one step between me and death. That applies to your life, and that is, applies what? To my life. I'm here to tell you, 
you and I need to be serious about our eternal home. And you see, we spend so much time, I think, not all of us, worrying about what's here on earth. But you ought to be getting your timber ready for what's up in heaven. You ought to think about an eternal home, a home where the saints of God going to be. That's the home you ought to be worried about. It could be you today when you walk out there that you have a wreck and we'll never know. But I'm telling you right now, the day is your salvation. You need to heed it now. Wherever you go, God is going to be with you. Father, Son of Man, come in at an hour which you think what? Not. Not. You don't believe it'll happen. Well, Tasha can witness this. When we called 911 to her mother, and they loaded her up, and she was talking to us. And she say, told me, now you meet me at the hospital. I'm all right. And when I got to the hospital, and Val got to the hospital, they said, no, y'all need to stay in this room here. She never spoke another word to her family. She was dead. Now, what all, if she didn't have it ready when she spoke to us, she couldn't do anything about it now. I'm telling you, the day is the day. If you don't know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you ought to get to know him because he's the best friend that you ever have. You hear what I say? Now I want to go, if you would, Paul, to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. 3 verse 2. I'm trying to show you what the scriptures tell us about moving on. But some of us don't think about we need to get an eternal home. And I'm going to come back to a verse in that a few minutes. It is a time to be what? And a time to what? You see, and a time to plant and a time to pluck up. That which is what? Plant it. It's a time. My Christian friends, it's a time for you. Don't you think you, won't, you are not going to live as long as Methuselah? He lived 969 years, but what? He died. He died. He died. Those that store up there in Buffalo, the thing that happened this week here, it could have been you. But by the grace of God, God spared your life, and he spared my life. You see, if somebody don't raise you from the dead like Jesus did, Lazarus, as Paul spoke to the boy that fell out the window, as Peter prayed for the lady that died and brought her back, there is no second chance. Listen to me. There is no second chance in the grave. I want to drive this home. There is no second chance in the grave. We need to get serious about our salvation. We need to get serious about meeting our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because it's coming. I don't know how you're going to leave here, but it doesn't matter as long as you have Jesus Christ in your life and in my life. Now, talk about judgment. All of us in here right now got a chance today to prepare our lives to meet Jesus Christ. Today is the day. Hard not your heart. This is the day right now Right now is the day of salvation. What are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? You probably were no special than those people that lost their lives in that stove. Nothing special. Some of them probably were children of God. But the thing is, you need to know for yourself that you saved. You need to know that for yourself. 
that you've committed your life to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You need to know that. Because it's a personal thing. And don't waste so much of your time worrying about what's going on here because everything you see with your eyes here on earth, you're going to leave it. I don't care how much money you got, you're going to leave it. I don't care how much fame you got, you're going to leave it. So why don't you plant something eternal in God's heaven? He's talking about that the moss and rust, well, not what? Mess with it. Because Jesus Christ has a home for all of us. If you accept him as your personal, personal savior. And I'm going to tell you this. You see, judgment is a thing that all of us got to face. That's why it says it's appointed once to man. You're going to face judgment. See, see, someday you must face Jesus Christ. I can't judge you. You can't judge me. But God, the faithful judge, is going to judge all of us. And whatever he says, it's right. There won't be no out-talking God because his record is on high. And he can tell you all about yourself. So your job and my job is to do the best we can and ask God to forgive us for our sin, and then what? Repent. You say, it's no good. If you're going to do your sin and don't repent, what good is it? They say in our Sunday school, you got to learn to love your neighbors as yourself. You see, there's a great falling away today. Why? Because people that say they're believers won't share their faith with other people that don't know Jesus Christ. Well, how are they to know about the Lord if we don't tell them? How are they to know? Don't talk about I'm saved and I got mine. No. Go ye therefore in all the world. I know some of y'all don't like this, but it's all right with me because I know one thing. I'm going to die just like you. And I'm going to face judgment just like you. There's no around. There's no way around that. That I can't, I can't get away from it. I can't get. You can see. Let me say this to you. You can elect your salvation here all you want to. But let me tell you something. Church is coming up again. It's coming up again. And you're going to have to stand before our Savior. You hear what I say? You're going to have to stand before our Savior. And you hope and say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Paul, while I'm looking at us, take your time now. I want you to find 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. It's an old familiar scripture that everybody knows. Now, this I'm asking you and I'm asking myself. If this far we know that if this earthly house of this tabernacle was dissolved, do you have a building some way? Do you have a God that you have been serving all your years that know you and you know him? Do you know him? Do you know him? It's a, a building of God. And a house not made with his hands, I'll say in human hands, eternal in God's heaven. Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Because in my father's house of many mansions, if it was not so, I would have told you. Then he said, I, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place, for, I will come again and receive ye unto myself. That way I am, you may be there also. Amen. Oh, man, what a promise. Oh, what a promise. 
Oh, well, a promise, when God make a promise, he keeps his promise. He will not let you down. His promise is good. His promise is faithful. Yeah. Leave there. Yeah. Next thing is preparation. Preparation. Are you making any preparation to meet Jesus Christ? I didn't ask you, did you sing in the choir? I didn't ask you, are you usher? I didn't ask you what auxiliary you're in. Or not what committee that you're on. I ask you, are you making preparation to meet our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Are you anticipating that you're going to have to meet Jesus? Do you have the foresight to understand that all the pictures that you read in God's Word have passed on? Huh? They passed on. Even great Abraham, the father of the faithful, have passed on. And I foresaid it a few minutes ago. If the rapture not, does not come in your lifetime, you're going to have to face Jesus Christ. Now, what preparation are you making? It's because someday he's going to judge you and he's going to judge me. And ain't nothing you're going to be able to do about when I stand before the Savior. Huh? I used to, t I tell Deacon Aaron this all the time. And it's something for you to think about. Married ladies and married men. What used to, what keeps me on the straight and the narrow is this. And ladies, I want you to think about this. Men, I want you to think about this. I used to tell them always, If my wife went before me and we used to talk about it, and I'll use the analogy, if St. Peter came to the gate and he allowed her to come, and he'd look at me and St. Peter would tell me, you can't come in. And I told Deacon Aaron, she would say, tell me you was a pa preacher and a pastor and you can't come in? If you a deacon, you can't come in? You a missionary? You can't. What did you do while God gave you life here on earth? What did you do that you cannot come in to the kingdom of God? What were you doing with your life? Were you pretending to be something you was not? What do you think? If one of you go before the other and he said, so and so is coming today. And when you get there smiling, uh, and he say, depart from me because I know you not. So all your work has been done in vain because it was more about you than about God. Now let me tell you how simple your life is. In my life is. Paul, I ask you to give me James chapter 4, verse 14, a very familiar scripture that all of you have known. You've read about it. You've seen it talked about. But where, look at what he says. Whereas ye know not what shall be on tomorrow. If you live, you don't know what tomorrow going to bring. You don't even know what this afternoon going to bring. But look what the great James say. For what is your life? Question mark. What is your life? You can be the smartest man in the world. It doesn't make any difference. But what is your life? A smartest woman, boy, girl, what is your life? But look what he say. It is even a vapor. You ever put water in a kettle and have it ball and you see the vapor coming out of it? That appear for what? A little time. And it's what? It's gone away. And he said, it vanished away. You and I are here 
for a little time. A little time. And we are gone. And I always like to say this. I want you all to think about this. When you're gone, who's going to remember you besides your wife or your husband or your children? Who's going to remember you? How long will they think about you? Huh? How long will they think about you? You don't know, and I don't know. Because, see, in this life that you know and I know, because you have rejected Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you still got to meet him. Don't care about you rejected him. You still going to have to meet him. Amen? Now, let me say this and I'm going to be through. Only Christ can save you. Don't you go around talking about you can save somebody. If you could, you would have saved yourself. You didn't have the power to save yourself. Now, what makes you think you're going to save somebody else? You leave saving up to Jesus Christ. And what you do, you do what you can in sharing Jesus Christ with others. And God will appreciate the things that you do. So it's appointed once the man to die. And after that, the judgment. It's coming. I can't stop it. You can't stop it. And probably there's no one in here, probably if they had children, they might would do it. There's nobody in here going to say, I'll die for you. Everybody want their own plotted days that God have granted them, my Christian friends. And I'd like to say to you, and I know this is going to bother a lot of you, but is it just life? I need to get two verses out, but I'm going to just do this one. Look at Job 14 and 1, and I'm going to close and let you all out. Look at Job 14 and 1. Look at Job 14 and 1. Now look at this. Look at it. Man that is born off a woman. Now why I read that? I said off a what? Woman. So I don't have no problem with that. Now you may have a problem. I ain't going to get into all of that. But I know that. I believe what the words say. Man, boy, girl is born of a woman. Now you hear what I say? Don't call me either. I ain't going to answer your call either. It's born of a woman. And off a few days, And it's full of what? Trouble. You're not going to escape trouble. Not on your own. But you can ask God to strengthen you. Hold me. Keep me. Take care of me. Give me the faith to stand when my knees are buckling. When I don't want to get up, give me the faith to get up. Walk proud and ask God to cover me with your blood. As I go through the seen dangers and unseen. But I'm traveling by your grace. And I know your mercy is enough for me. All I've got to do is keep my head up. And I have faith in God. Faith is the substance of things that hope for. And the evidence of things not seen. I have not seen God, but I believe his word. And one day, I'm going to see the scars in his hand and in his feet. One day, I hope to stand before him and he's saying to me, well done, well done, my good and faithful servant. And my God, it could have been you and it could have been me. God bless you today. It's my prayer. Amen and amen.
If the choir get ready to sing, we going to pray for your salvation. Right now, our gracious Heavenly Father, if there's anyone in the sound of my voice in this auditorium that don't know you as a personal Savior. I ask the Holy Spirit to kindle in you, stir up in you, that they need a Savior in their life. Let them know that you will never leave them nor forsake them. Let them know you're a good provider. Let them know, Lord, that aren't you all a good provider? You will guide them while they walk on these mundane shows. Be with them right now, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. And amen. amen. And amen. As Brother Hall and I are going to give you the benediction. Let's, let us all stand. <laughs>